Well, according to reports, Arkansas has a defensive coordinator that's about to be hired, but they also had another different guy that was about to be hired before. So what actually is going on with the Razorback defensive coordinator search? We'll talk about that as well as the transfer portal giving and taking away, but at this point really taking away a lot more. And then the NIL, is it ruining college football as much as everyone's trying to say it is? We'll talk about it all on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, helping you find the most qualified candidates that you want to talk to Faster, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Monday or Sunday, kind of just depending on when you're listening to this right now. But either way, I hope everybody's having a good one at the end of the day because we're getting closer to the holiday season, closer to Christmas at least. And so I know that uh, there's going to be a lot of people traveling and having great times with that too. But uh, it's getting closer, about to get there, and hopefully whatever your plans are ends up being good ones. But it's been a wild weekend, an absolutely wild weekend, and that's kind of why I'm recording this podcast early uh, here on Sunday, actually, because there are some things that happened that it's just like I couldn't wait till Monday, and the way that things are changing and uh, bouncing all over the place, it, it's kind of hard to even keep up at this point in time. And we're not even really going to have a chance to talk about basketball just because of uh, all the craziness that's been going on with uh, the transfer portal, coaching changes, and raise your back football and all that. So I'm sure we'll get to that at some point in time. But it just goes to show you that the transfer portal season, if you will, is is here, and it is going crazy. And we'll get to that in, in a little bit, especially with uh, some of the news with Arkansas. But I do want to dive into what was being reported on Friday and looks to be the actual case with Arkansas and their new defensive coordinator. We know that they've been looking at Different defensive coordinators. We know that some guys have been rumored to be into the mix for the uh, defensive coordinator position. And as you know, if you've listened to this podcast, I say, hey, the best guy that needs to be out there is the guy that is the recruiter of the defense. Like that needs to be the dude that you want to see and you want to have for sure. So it looks like a court, and I want to get the report right. It came to Bruce Feldman originally reporting that he was hearing that Tulane defensive coordinator Chris Houston or Chris Hampton was going to be emerging as a strong candidate for the defensive coordinator job. Now, it wasn't anything set in stone as far as he's getting the job. He just emerged as a strong candidate. That happened just a couple days ago on Friday. And then you had the news, and this actually comes from, originally reported by uh, Mark Zenitz, but Brandon Marcel also of 24-7 Sports said it, where Arkansas is hiring. So not emerging candidates, not anything like that. Arkansas is hiring Central Florida defensive coordinator Travis Williams as its next play caller. Williams, a former All-SEC linebacker, coached linebackers at Auburn before a successful two seasons of calling plays for Gus Malzahn at UCF. So to me, I know that uh, Bruce Feldman is a great reporter, but again, people saw that and maybe took it as, oh, that's going to be the next guy. It's like, no, he just emerged as the leading candidate for him. But it looks like the Travis Williams deal is legitimate. And it looks like uh, that Bruce Feldman even got on, on top of it too and reported it. And guys here locally, Trey Biddy, all of them with Hawksports.com also confirmed it too. So who is this guy though? It's a question that everyone asks because they want to know who is he? What can he do? Is he good? Is he bad? Whatever. Well, let's kind of go through some of the things that we know about Travis Williams and why this could or could not be a really good hire for Arkansas. So during his time at Auburn, Auburn finished in the top 17 nationally in scoring defense during four of those five seasons. Okay. And he also had the fact that he's familiar with the SEC landscape. He's from South Carolina and Columbia, but he played at Auburn. He was at Auburn from 2014 to 2020. So the bulk of the Gus Malzahn era and also a lot of those times, or I think I guess two of those times, when Auburn ended up winning the SEC West. So he was linebackers coach in 2016 
And then he was given his first on-field position, which was at that point. And then he was named co-defensive coordinator from 2019 to 2020. And 2021, he was the linebacker coach at Miami. And then he accepted the D.C. job over at UCF under Gus Malzahn. And UCF this season gave up 23 points uh, on the year, which was 39th nationally. They also finished third uh, in his first year there in 25 or with points per game at 24 and a half with uh, – yeah, with in his first year there, 2021, and then for this year too. So uh, basically just saying that he's had good defenses over the past the two years that they were there. Or the two years that Gus Malzahn has been there at UCF, they've done good, but they increased it a little bit there uh, from one year to the next. They're also with fifth in the ACC this season in uh, total defense, giving up 382 yards a game, which is 71st nationally. And they were also fourth last year in yards uh, per game allowed. Now, people are going to see the stats, and it, just like we talked about before, they're going to say, okay, well, let's look at what he did for me lately and recently, and we see those numbers like, well, that sucks. He did a UCF, and you know he was only uh, this particular rank and in that, in that conference and this particular rank nationally. No, nope, don't want him. He's terrible, terrible hire, joke, whatever. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> just don't do that. Look at it in a, in a more logical perspective. I don't know if the guy is going to be incredible or not, but let's just look at, let's dive into it a little deeper. Let's stop just looking at one number from one year. Let's look a little bit more into this, especially when it comes to the recruiting. When he was at Auburn, he recruited and signed five-star linebacker Owen Popo. He also had several other four-star recruits like Smoke Monday. If you remember him, he was really good. He landed commitments uh, to two four-star twin linebackers and Andrew Harris as well as Michael Harris who are ranked 252 and 312 prospects in the nation. And they both have multiple Power 5 offers, but they had committed to UCF. All in total, he has commits from or signatures from 14 four-star recruits and one five-star recruit in his seven years as a coach. And then if you need to take it one step further, this is just coming from someone with a national perspective, uh, Michael Bratton, who's done a really good job in covering all things SEC and does that SEC podcast. He actually came out uh, with a tweet when it was being announced from Bruce Feldman and others that he was going to be the guy at Arkansas. Mike Bratton said Travis Williams would rank among the top five best recruiters among all assistants in the SEC. If nothing else, Razorbacks are getting an elite recruiter to run their defense. So other people, too, have said things about Travis Williams and how good he is. And again, this is all coming out on Saturday. And. I even got uh, Zach Blackerby from Locked On Auburn, for who's, who does a great job, has the best podcast there covering all things Auburn. As soon as it was announced that or reported that he was going to be the next defensive coordinator at Arkansas, Zach texted me and said he is an elite recruiter. He will get the most out of his linebackers. They had to promote him to co-DC to give him a raise just to keep him on staff. He's a high-energy guy that will be in hype videos and have some fun raps out there. He teaches his linebackers to engage and get into the lane easily. So from what I've heard and from what I've heard from guys that are there in Auburn, guys that are national college football guys, and obviously with the resume that's being put together as far as recruiting goes, this seems like it's a really good hire in my opinion, in my opinion. And you know that I've talked about recruiting and I feel like it is the most important thing that you could ever have when it comes to a defensive coordinator is having an elite recruiter. And it seems like this guy fits the bill. So obviously you're going to have to have schemes. You're going to have to see who he ends up bringing alongside as far as coaches, you know, does he clean house and fire his own guys? Does he fit right in with Deke Adams? And you know, what about Michael Schur? Is he going to go on to UNLV with Barry Odom? I'd assume he would, but what about Dominic Bowman? Who's going to coach safeties? You know, there's just a lot of questions getting thrown around. I guess I would assume that, if uh, you're bringing in Travis Williams, then probably means that uh, Michael Schur is leaving because tra uh, Travis Williams would coach linebackers. But what it looks like is that since this guy is an elite recruiter and the fact that you have people saying that he would be one of the best recruiting assistant coaches in all of the SEC, I'm excited about it. I'm happy about it. Now, they got to sign on the dotted line. They got to move forward on it, and it has to be officially announced, which it seems like, at least according to reports, that he's been out there recruiting the guys that are currently committed to Arkansas as well as other people too. So we'll see how that goes. But it looks like it's pretty much set in stone that he's going to be your new defensive coordinator. And we'll have to see what he does in the recruiting realm because he signing days right around the corner. We know that 
you got a situation on the transfer portal where you're trying to bring some guys in, uh, some guys to, to really help out, whether it's defensive backs. I still think linebackers should be something you look at a little bit more, even some defensive line, but you definitely have needs pretty much across the board on defense, some more apparent than others, but uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I want to see what this guy can do in recruiting. If he's as good as what people say, and if he's the guy that can bring in the highest level of talent, then this is going to be a great hire for Sam Pittman. I think that with what Arkansas has gone through over the past few years, they have had problems defensively. We all know that. But even when they made it by defensively, you know, just they did it with guys that weren't NFL players, you know, that high level player. You know, I love Grant Morgan. I love Hayden Henry. I thought they did a really good job, but they weren't high level, you know, NFL talent guys. They just weren't. And that's fine. Like you can still be a great college football player or a good college football player and not go to the NFL and have success. I'm not saying you have to, but there is a difference between the the skill set and the athleticism and the talent level. And, you know, Arkansas, I think they they did some things to get closer to that, but they also hurt themselves in a lot of ways, especially there in the secondary this past year where they just didn't have that high level talent. So if they can bring in Travis Williams and if he can immediately make an impact by getting into the transfer portal and getting some big names out of there, when I'm talking about big names, I'm talking about getting some, some dudes, some safeties, because you're going to need those. I'm talking about going and getting some linebackers. I love Chris Poo Paul. There may be some other guys that could be in the mix that are currently on this roster, but if they can make a splash there, you know, who knows? Like maybe they can really make some noise and be that much more of an improved defense all into the next season. But we're going to have to see how it goes. I know that people get tired of me saying that we have to be patient, we have to wait, but it's true. I, I don't, and I don't think with the defensive coordinator, no matter who you ended up hiring, Nobody was going to be 100% excited. Like, everybody's got who they wanted. And, you know, I saw people that were tweeting on me saying, Will Muschamp. I'm like, are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. Like, do you really want a retread of a defensive coordinator that was in their prime 10 years ago? Didn't you already try that with John Chavis? See how that went? You don't need that. I like the idea of Travis Williams. I don't know for a fact if he'll be elite or not, but I like the idea. I like the way that he has handled himself in recruiting. I even checked out some videos of him, especially when he was at UCF. He seems like a guy that the players love. Uh, he seems like a big culture guy. He's got a lot of energy. And so if he can just step right in and make an impact, especially in recruiting for Arkansas, then I feel like they got the right guy. But we'll see once they put it down to paper, once it officially be announced. But for all intents and purposes, I like it. I like it. And I know a lot of you probably don't, and that's fine. But uh, again, Recruiting is everything. If he's a good recruiter, let's go. See how it happens. These days, every new potential hire can feel like such a high stakes wager for your small business. And that's when you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. So I need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It makes it so easy to connect to people and search for people and also for people to search for you. It's just anytime you want to have high quality candidates, people that you want to have understand the job that you're offering, while also maybe some of you out there that are looking for a job in a particular place with particular people, particular skills, whatever it is, LinkedIn job is going to help you out with that. And it's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus all their leading competitors. So LinkedIn jobs will help you find those candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, and boy, this one, this is a tough segment to do because there has been, you know, we talked about the coordinator hire and how there's positives there. There's things I like about that. But it all comes still where the transfer portal has been not helping out Arkansas just over the past few days, especially. They've gotten a few players in here and there, you know, the wide receiver, uh, the backup quarterback, as well as an offensive lineman. Those are those are definitely some needs. But defensively, you've yet to get anybody out of that portal. Now, it's not over yet. I still believe the people who report on this stuff, they think that it's still going to be a really good portal season for Arkansas when it all comes to the end. But as of right now, though, 
you got guys that have left Arkansas and you're not getting a whole lot back. Now, Trey Knox left the program, and we kind of alluded to that a little bit last week and just how the reactions came in from that. And, you know, it was something like, okay, well, you know, he lost Al Loggins and maybe wants to start some fresh. But the one that I honestly did not expect, actually there were two, there were two of them, uh, but one of them especially is that Jalen Catalan has officially entered into the transfer portal. Now, Isaiah Nichols was the other one that entered into the transfer portal, which we'll talk about in a second, but I want to focus on Jalen Catalan. This one was a little upsetting to me because of all the things that Jalen Catalan was going to do next, I always assumed that it was either going to be going to the NFL or coming back another year. Those were really the only options I really could think of that he would have or he would want to have because he knows that, listen, at Arkansas, you know, you're a captain, you're uh, your guy that obviously is beloved here. You have NIL deals here. Like, this is where you want to be. But to see when he actually entered into the transfer portal, Sam Pittman said he was leaning towards that, and then it became official. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand at first. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not upset at Jalen Catalan. Like, you know, it's his decision. It's his life. He can do whatever he wants. So I'm not upset at him. I'm not trying to say that. I was just more upset at the situation because I really would have liked to have seen Jalen Catalan return another year. And uh, but I also would have understood more if he just wanted to go pro. But to go into the portal, don't know where he's going to go at this point in time. It, it's a little alarming and it's a little frustrating and it's a little sad. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a school that he already has in mind immediately. Uh, maybe it's, you know, is it going to be something here in the SEC? I don't really know. But Isaiah Nichols being the other guy that transfers out and uh, he's a guy that started all 12 games this past year. He's been a part of this defense since 2019. He had this year uh, finished with 16 tackles, one pass breakup. So this year it wasn't as good as it was the previous year for him, but he hits the portal too. So you're losing uh, a starting, at least when he was healthy, a starting All-American caliber safety in Jalen Catalan, and you're losing a starting defensive lineman in Isaiah Nichols. So I am going to say it this way, because then we'll also talk about some recruiting news too. I'm going to say it this way. I am not ever going to bring up something that I know as facts when it comes to reasons behind these particular individuals going into the portal unless they say it or the coach says it or it, somebody reports it. Like I want to be very clear that what I'm about to say is just my opinion. It's my opinion. It's just what I think, what I feel about the situation. And looking at the surrounding environment of what we're in, this is my belief of a possibility as to why someone like Jalen Catalan would enter into the portal. And to be honest, I think it's because somebody offered him a better deal with NIL. Now, I could be totally wrong. I could be absolutely off base. And I would accept that. And that's why I'm trying to just tell everybody, make sure before anyone cuts a clip, says, this is what I said. Try to make sure that everybody understands that I have no evidence of it or anything. It's just me looking at the big picture and looking at, okay, there has to be something more to this. Because if you're someone like Jalen Catalan, who has had two back-to-back season-ending injuries, you're all-American caliber, and you're at Arkansas where you're beloved, you, the coaches love you, uh, you know, obviously you dealt with Barry Odom, which I know is gone, but it just seemed like there was everything going for you at Arkansas. You had the NIL deals. You, you spoke so highly of Arkansas and of Sam Pittman, of the program. You stuck it out, all of these things. And then you just hop into the portal. You want to go somewhere else. I know Sam Pittman said in his press conference, he's like, well, I think he wants a fresh start. Oh, okay. But it still just doesn't it, with with what's going on with NIL, which we'll get into more specifics in a bit. Anytime a, a high caliber player who starts at a program leaves, and especially at the timing of it all, I can't help but think NIL is involved. Again, I may maybe I'm wrong, but that's my gut reaction. That's my gut feeling. And this is the case where everything's going on in college football. If you see somebody who is starting and having success at one program, and then just ventures into the portal, you're like, why would you do that? You know, I think back to even last year uh, with the Jordan Addison kid from Pitt. 
The dude was like the best wide receiver in the country, won the award for the best wide receiver in the country, had, had a great thing going, but then he just jumps into the portal and goes to USC. And you can't sit there and tell me that there wasn't some sort of deal. Like, it, it's obvious. Things like that are obvious. And maybe it's the sinister nature in me, but that's what I believe. Now, if that's the case, and if it was Jalen Catalan was offered a better NIL deal or wanted more NIL and wasn't given it, whatever it was, and he decided to go in and he's going somewhere where he can get that opportunity at a little better level, then it is his right to do so. And it is the right of that school to offer it because right now it's the wild west of college football and there doesn't have really any rules or regulations on it to stop it from happening. You just got to say, sucks, but hey, it's the way it goes. You got to figure out and got to move on. But it's just disappointing that now Arkansas in back-to-back -back years has had a defensive captain, a guy who was voted on by the team to be the captain of the team, and in both cases have a year of eligibility, and in both cases they left. It's disappointing. And so I just think that the NIL is really starting to play a, a much more heavier role than what any of us could have ever realized. So if Jalen Catalan, I guess we'll find out where he ends up going, as well as Isaiah Nichols and well some other people, because as far as I know, uh, the name guys that have transferred out of Arkansas have not officially announced where they're going just yet. You know, Trey Knox has not announced it. Um, Malik Hornsby hasn't announced it. Miles Slusher hasn't announced it. Keetron Jackson hasn't announced it. There's a few of them that we're waiting on, but right now the portal is definitely taking from Arkansas right now, a lot more right now than what it's giving. But wait for this week. We'll see uh, how this plays out because we know signing day is coming up too. And unfortunately for Arkansas, they did lose a commitment. They've lost a couple commitments. Uh, but Jaden Ham, one of the four-star tight ends, decommitted from Arkansas. And it looks like he's going to be going to Kansas, which makes that so interesting. Like Arkansas is playing Kansas in the, in the Liberty Bowl. But uh, Crystal Ball predictions have him going to Kansas. So that's unfortunate, but they still have the other two tight ends. And I, th I still think that they'll both stay committed. I could be wrong, but I still think they'll both stay committed. And as far as the portal goes, you're still going to have some other guys in the mix too. So it's just not very positive right now coming out of the portal for Arkansas. It's more negative news, but it's, I still believe you got to wait till the dust settles, man. I know I keep saying that. I know people get annoyed by it, but you just got to wait. Just got to wait to see how it all plays out. So let's wait and see how it actually all plays out. We'll talk about NIL here in just a second, but first I got to tell you, betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college, bowl season to basketball, World Cup. They got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can get those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get all of your sports betting info. So head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more over at BetOnline, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. All right, this is, uh, I'm going to try to make this as concise as possible because, uh, you know, we've already gone pretty in depth with the other two topics, but the NIL and the question of, is it ruining college football? Coaches have talked about it. Sam Pittman even brought it up and just how, insane it is right now i went to a razorback foundation event where hunter year spoke to people uh there in uh, little rock about nil and just how insanely difficult it is and how it, it's so tough to at a point to where you're having to not only recruit yeah uh, the kids that you have coming out of high school but you have to recruit kids out of the transfer portal and you also have to recruit your own players that are currently on your roster and you, you just become to where Recruiting just used to be about kids coming out of high school, but now because of the portal and because of the NIL, you've got three different levels of recruiting when it comes to the, your future players, your potential replacement players, and then also your current players. It's just wild, and I can't imagine what it's like to manage a roster right now during all of this. And so the question has come up about, is NIL ruining college football? Because last week I talked about NIL and how it's great at Arkansas, and they have plenty of money. Have plenty of opportunities for these kids to be able to have great deals for them and set them up nicely for it and all on all of that. But I will say it, they they if there's only a some sort of way to make it change, where you're not having the wild west, where you're not having to worry about recruiting your own team every year because anytime that you end up having a good player, 
there's going to be other teams that are coming after him. Like, I would uh, bet dollars to donuts that, like, Auburn started recruiting K.J. Jefferson. Like, I would totally see that. And granted, it's K.J. staying, but, you know, was there something where maybe there had to be NIL matching or whatever? Again, I'm just throwing a scenario out there, but it's all over the place. And so I think NIL, in its theory and also in its, like, inception, was about the right thing. It was about doing what's right and doing what's right by the players. Cause I've always said, I don't believe you should get paid just because you play, but I do believe you should get paid. If you have a brand that is great enough to make money on as a college athlete. I've always said that I like that. And I like the, the spirit of it, but it's now it's just become where that doesn't matter. They're not paying you for your image and brand and all that because you're just a good old swell kid. And once you get on campus, people like you, they're paying you because you're talented. And they disguise it where you're not getting anything out of it in return. You know, it used to be something that was like, okay, well, hey, you come to my business, sign some autographs, take some pictures, I'll pay you this. Now it's just about, hey, if you come here, you'll just make this. You show up. And yeah, we'll find something for you to do, you know. Make an appearance, wave, you know, tell everybody to stay in school, stay off drugs. You know, just something lame like that. But well, I don't even mean lame, but you know what I mean. Like something that does not require it's like oh yeah it's like i always look back to the story that I always laugh about if you remember Rhett bomar that oklahoma quarterback that got ruled ineligible because he was like washing bmws or mercedes like for his summertime job but he was getting paid five grand a week or something crazy like that like that's pretty much what it's become where yes you're getting these opportunities but people aren't giving them to you at the at the value of what you'd give to anybody they're giving it to you in this high dollar value, and it has to be something that's agreed upon before you even get on campus. So that element of it has really screwed with college football so much that college football coaches, and I'm not somebody that has a whole lot of sympathy for people that make as much money as college football coaches do and make even more money when they get fired from being at college football coaches. But I do have sympathy in this regard to where you're talking about how many players they have to keep up with. I mean, 85 scholarship players. They have assistant coaches. They have like three different elements, and it's all like smashed into one where signing day is at the same time now in December, portal season, same time in December. And then when your players are thinking about leaving, it's in the same time as December. Like it's all happening at once where you can't even get ready for your bowl game. Like you, you can't, you can't even focus on that. As important as that is, it's like your, your mind is elsewhere. So it's just a madhouse. And I think it needs to be fixed. But the problem is, is I don't know how. I don't know if anyone knows how. Like, what can you do? What can you do to fix NIL in college football? And there may be some theories back there. They may say, okay, we'll do this and, and change that. If you don't know, enforce this. Okay, yeah. I, I think that there are some things you can say. But here's the thing. Let, let's, just, let's just roll it out this way. The NCAA has never been more irrelevant than what they are right now. Once this deal came into play for NIL and the NCAA could no longer stop it or enforce any sort of disciplinary actions or anything when it came to payment of players, they just went out the door. This is all being controlled by the biggest money, which is, of course, conferences, television networks, all of those things. And they couldn't legally put in any sort of way of, like, going through it all and making sure that there's a, a transparency type of deal with it to make sure that there's a, a like a, a, a market cap on what people could make. Like there's none of that. It's literally fair game across the board, no matter what. So it's, it's hard to keep up with. And I can't imagine what it's like as a coach, but I will say this, if they ever do find a way, and, and maybe this would be the way that you could, I don't know how much you could curb it, but, what I'd like to see is almost in a case of, hey, if there is ever a coach that is employed by a school somewhere or employed or part of the program or whatever and reaches out to a player or a player's family or representation or whatever that is currently on another college football team, if that ever comes out, that entire – there needs to be severe punishments like show causes like where you're banned from college football. Because I feel like if you go that severe, that would be the only – way you'd even have anything close to getting people to think twice before doing it and if it could i know it'd be hard to trace there's if there if there's a way of going
going about and making it public knowledge, maybe something like that. Like maybe every NIL deal has to become public knowledge of how much they're making and what it comes with, or at least in the knowledge of the NCAA or whoever's involved in forcing it. Maybe something like that. But right now, this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it, and this doesn't need to be the way. Again, I like NIL in theory and in spirit. It's got the right idea, but I don't like what it's become. It doesn't need to be this where it's just – and I don't even mind the element of getting players in recruiting and out of high school to come to your school. Like I don't mind that because it's still recruiting at the end of the day. My and, and the portal is one thing, but my biggest issue are coaches and teams that contact players that are on other teams already, like that are on, a, on another roster, and they go to them, go to their family or whoever, and say, "Hey, I know how much you make in there. Okay, we'll double that if you come here. If you just enter in the portal, you'll play for us immediately. Come here. That, that that's trash. That's got to be fixed. That's got to be something that stops. But I don't know if it ever will. And I don't know what it's going to take. But this is outrageous. It's outrageous." And I think that there's probably players on Arkansas that's done that. And I mean, I don't know, maybe Arkansas's done it too. Maybe Arkansas, you know, went to certain players while they were on current. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. We'll never know, but it needs to change and it needs to be fixed. And hopefully it does someday, but I just, it's hard to keep up with, man. <laughs> Again, I can't imagine what it's like to be a college football coach right now, but that's why they pay the big bucks or make the big bucks. So hmm. hopefully we get some good news. Hopefully we get some good portal news this week. For Arkansas. Just wait on it. I think it'll happen. And if it doesn't, everybody can yell at me in the comment section. Just do that instead. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.